The ACC meets the SEC in Charlotte at Bank of America Stadium, South Carolina. A team that is one of the most improved in the SEC, taking on NC State, a popular dark horse pick in the ACC. And welcome to the booth with Greg McElroy. I'm Dave Pash, Tom Luganville in a bit. Obviously, tonight is a game everybody's talking about, Mac, with Florida State and Alabama. But this is a game that's under the radar because you've got a team many pick to make the college football playoff and then South Carolina, which will not be an easy out this year. Yeah, there's no doubt. These teams have really improved, starting with South Carolina. Offensively, they saved their best performance for last. Will Muschamp now going into his second season. You can expect this group to really be improved, not only on the offensive side of the ball, but on the defensive side of the ball. So, Tom, they're going to have their hands full, however, going up against what Dave said, a dark horse in the ACC. Uh, there's no question, Greg. Hey, listen, expectations are at an all-time high for NC State. Two things have to happen. they got to beat the teams they're supposed to, and they've got to beat somebody maybe they're not expected to. The test starts today with South Carolina. We'll find out if the expectations are real. You talked about it, Lugs. Lost to East Carolina last year in Boston College. And then Kyle Bambard missed that short field goal at the end of the game in Clemson. If NC State beats Clemson, maybe the Tigers don't even play in the college football playoff. And then Florida State, there was a dropped interception. South Carolina won the toss, elected to receive Debo Samuel, a name to remember this year. This is a dangerous weapon for South Carolina in the return game, as well as on offense. Toe meets leather here in Charlotte. Samuel on the three yard line. And Samuel is free past the 30 yard line. Samuel might go. What a way to start the season. 97 yard touchdown. Debo Samuel, one of the most dangerous players in the SEC, just took the opening kickoff back for a touchdown. 97 yards. Welcome back, college football. We missed you. We love you. And Debo Samuel with a great way to start this one for the Gamecocks. He just got done before that kickoff talking about how NC State is a popular dark horse pick this year. 7-0, South Carolina, 13 seconds in. Here's how it happened just moments ago. Talk about getting the season off to an incredible start. Debo Samuel, welcome back, my friend. Touched just twice, three times there. Only the kicker to beat, and he was off to the races. Second year for Will Muschamp. They doubled their win total from two years ago at the end of the Steve Spurrier era as he resigned and Sean Elliott took over as the interim coach. Parker White kicking off now. Will we get a return for NC State? Nope. The win helped that a little bit. So the touchback NC State will start in the 25. The quarterback for the Wolfpack is graduate transfer Ryan Finley. is from Phoenix, Arizona. He started out on the West Coast at Boise State. He graduated from there in three years. Joined NC State in June of last year. It took him a while to get to know his teammates and ingratiate himself to the coaching staff. But he ended up being the starter last year, beating out a team favorite in Jalen McClendon. He led NC State to a 7-6 record. But they had a couple of bad losses. East Carolina, Boston College, they should have defeated Clemson. Missed field goal at the end. And they also had a chance to knock off Florida State. And they're a team that a lot of people like to contend in the ACC here in 2017. Naheem Hines gets the call on first down. Not much. Maybe two. We mentioned Ryan Finley was at Boise State. He was there with offensive coordinator Eli Drinkwitz. Then both came to Raleigh last year. Drinkwitz coached him from the sideline last year, but he told us that he gets so emotional yelling at Ryan Finley that he said he's got to take himself away from it and go upstairs in the booth this year and talk to him on the phone. Finley wide open in the middle of the field is Kelvin Harmon, a first down past the 40. 
Ryan Finley needed to make sure that he won the locker room and he had a tough time doing that arriving in June of last year going through a quarterback competition and then trying to lead this team throughout the regular season. Now he's had 14 months to get to know his teammates. His teammates looked at him and they said you know what? you're a package deal with our new OC. I'm not sure how I feel about this because we love this kid McClendon who's been competing here for the last couple of years so he's really won the locker room this year. And Finley has another open receiver but the pass is dropped by Jalen Samuels. Well, one of the ways that Finley tried to get involved with the guys last year be one of the guys get to know him is go out for sushi something that he wasn't used to. So he went out took his offensive lineman out for dinner and they said. You like guacamole? Yeah. He said, absolutely. Say so here, try guacamole on sushi. They put a big chunk of guacamole on there. He took a bite out of it and realized it was wasabi. A little different taste, Dave. A little different taste. First of all, why did he think that guacamole would be at a sushi restaurant beyond me? Hines on the carry gets stood off. No gain. As Sky Moore with the hit. And boy, that must feel good for Sky Moore. Missed last year with a neck injury, led South Carolina in tackles each of his first three seasons before missing 2016. He's a huge piece. He's fast, he can play sideline to sideline, and he's really a professional with the way he prepares. So for this young South Carolina team, watching him work on a daily basis has been invaluable as they try to approach this season. They just converted third and nine. Here's third and 11. It's a screen pass to Hines. And he's able to break a tackle and turn on the Jets. Out of bounds, close to a first down. Knocked out by Chris Lamonts. He is short. We'll see if NC State goes for it here on fourth down and two. Hines is one of the fastest players in the country. If he gets outside, look out. Great call by Elia Drinkwitz there. South Carolina in a pressure look, throwing a screen. And give him some green grass. Now they're thinking about it at least to go on fourth down. And with the offense staying out there, it appears as though it's going to be Ryan Finley and his Wolfpack teammates giving this one a shot. I like this. I do too. Show confidence in your offense on the first series. Play fake. Finley got Samuels. And Samuels able to get the first down. DJ Smith was too late getting out there. And it's. A move to change situation for the pack. Fourth and short, full flow going to the left. You sneak your most versatile weapon out back to the right. Nice, safe, easy completion to keep the drive alive. Well executed by the quarterback, Finley, and by the do-it-all stud, Jalen Samuels. I like the call by Dave Dorn in his fifth season as the NC State head coach. Here's Hines out of the backfield. And tripped up, otherwise he might have gone. DJ Smith got him, and you could see behind his reaction, he knew it, that if he broke that tackle, he's taking it to the house. What a good throw by Finley here, putting it right on Hines' face mask because Smith was trying to go over the top. He had to hold him up just a little bit, but man, when he turns on the Jets, it's over for Hines. Samuels collecting the pitch inside the 20 yard line, down near the 16. You know, there was so much made, guys, of Matt Day's departing for this offense and the production he had over his career, but I'm not so sure with the back by committee that NC State won't actually be more explosive, more versatile with Gillespie and Hines, who gives them a speed option in the backfield that they have not had the last three or four years. A little higher risk, higher reward. These yep. guys aren't necessarily as consistent as Day's, but their ceiling is every bit, if not considerably higher. Second and six, they run Hines off the right side. Hines powering his way past the 10 yard line, getting the first down. We are watching Hines down in the field now. He, he's not the tallest guy in the world, 5'9, but he's powerful, 200 pounds. Watch here. He is. Ball forward. I guess when you're running that fast and that hard and your legs are that strong, you have no choice but to fall forward, Dave. He may be short, but he's not small by any means. No, he is not. He's well put together. The great answer here by NC State after the big kickoff return that got South Carolina up early it was a heck of a drive by the Wolfpack offense. And it's a first and goal. Just inside the 10 yard line. That's Samuels in motion. He'll hand it to Gillespie, the first guy through. Stood up at the six by TJ Brunson, South Carolina's middle linebacker. So a gain of about three on the play. No, Greg, we, we talked about. 
how far along South Carolina has come on offense but defensively this is exactly what they need to avoid. They don't have the depth and the manpower to hold up and consistently be able to sustain drives like this on defense. They're going to have to get off the field. No question play number 14 coming up right now and nice balance in the early going for the Wolf Pack. Six rushes seven passes. On second and goal. It's going to be Finley keeping South Carolina never expected that touchdown pack. He only had one rushing touchdown all of last year. And he scores NC State's first touchdown of 2017. You're a quarterback and you pull it on the six yard line in the zone read principle. You better score. Nice read right there by Ryan Finley. Carson Wise is the place kicker. We mentioned the name of Kyle Bambard earlier. He missed that kick against Clemson last year that would have won the game and probably knocked Clemson out of the national championship picture. Carson Wise beat out Bambard for the kicking duties. And this is his first attempt. And he ties the game at seven. Ryan hit Finley had a few goals this offseason. One was to bulk up. Want to know why? Because he wanted to become a better runner. One carry, one touchdown. Pack. Now let's see if NC State kicks it to Samuel here. Now they kick it away from him, and it's fielded at the two-yard line. And out to the 20 is A.J. Turner. Bradley Chubb, terrific play. The All-American takes down Rico Dowdle, and the ball may have come out. They rule that Dowdle was down. But as a quarterback, it's tough to start behind the chain. Second and 11 for Jake Bentley, the sophomore quarterback. You look at the numbers for Bradley Chubb, one of the best defensive players in the country. Two-time captain as well. Here's a wide receiver screen to Samuel, past the 25-yard line. So a game of about eight on the play. It's a family affair with the Bentleys. Jake. A sophomore from Alabama skipped his senior year of high school, enrolled last year. They were going to redshirt him, but midseason they decided to pull a redshirt and start him. His brothers have played college football, and his dad is on the South Carolina staff as a coach. And Bentley is a talent. There's his dad, Bobby, the running backs coach. Jake played for his dad in high school. And a big third and three for Bentley. NC State bringing pressure. And the pass on target, and a first down and more. True freshman, Shai Smith, out to the 37-yard line. There's a shot of Jake, his brothers, and his dad. It's going to be cool, man, to play for your father in high school and then go to college and know that your dad is there for any conversation you want to have, not just talking about football, but talking about life. But it's difficult for his dad, Bobby Bentley, because he's the running back coach, and he says he has to resist the urge to coach him every single snap. He's got to focus on his guys. It's very natural to coach your son when he is such a good quarterback. Ninth play of this drive, NC State bringing pressure here. Bentley's pass is caught for a first down inside the 40 yard line. Already two catches for Shai Smith, a true freshman here on this drive. The alignment defensively makes no sense. Look how far inside. Sean Boone is. He's three yards inside Shai Smith. So Shai Smith gets a free first down, just three steps up and out. There's absolutely no reason. That's a misalignment in the secondary by NC State. They were in man to man. You have to funnel everything inside, not outside, the way Sean Boone did right there. They have some new players in the secondary, but they have eight defensive starters back. So you don't expect a mistake like that from the Wolfpack. As Dowdle is wrapped up after a gain of one by Jermaine Pratt, who's moving from the secondary to linebacker this year. You know, G Greg, this this series for South Carolina has been successful for one very significant reason. Every time they've had a third down, it's been four yards or less. Their their play calling, their selection, the choices made by Jake Bentley has put them in manageable situations. They've executed on third down. That's going to be a huge key, a huge key 
to keep that NC State offense on the sideline. And third down was a point of emphasis, Tom. They were one of the worst teams in the country on third down efficiency last year. Here's second and long and wide open. The catch is made by Dowdle inside the five. Touchdown! Saw that mistake on third down earlier. Here's a mistake on second down by NC State's D. The wheel route has been the route of choice so far in the 2017 season. Saw it a lot on Thursday in Ohio State, Indiana. It's tough to cover, especially when you have a capable receiving running back like Rico Dowdle is. Bobbled it a little bit, didn't catch it the first time, but a great find by Jake Bentley. Alexander Wozniak, a walk-on kicker, puts it through. And you guys both talked about the prolific offense that we should see this year from South Carolina. They mixed it up there, the run and the pass on that impressive drive for the Gamecocks. That's a great point you make because no preseason games, right? The NFL, you get preseason, all you have in college is scrimmages, so you really don't know until you get through the first couple of weeks what you got. Another touch back. NC State will start at the 25. Finley on the run and a sliding catch made by Kelvin Harmon. Hey guys, just real quick, uh, offensive coordinator Eli Drinkwitz has come down from the booth. Headsets are still not operating for both sidelines, so the coordinator now for NC State back on the field where he does not want to be. Right. He says he gets too emotional. He put himself in the booth this yeah. fall. Well, get rid of the emotion, coach. You're here now. The headset's not working for either team and they run it here they get the first down with Reggie Gillespie. It's amazing that we've seen touchdown drives of 14 plays for NC State and 11 plays from South Carolina with no headsets. That is truly amazing. We had one game like that in my career against Tennessee. We went three and out. So <laughs> it's very very difficult to handle the offense when you don't have communication with the box and the coaches looking overhead. So it tells you something about Finley and Bentley right and their understanding of the offense and what the coaches want it means they're really really good. <laughs> Here's Reggie Gillespie trying to run it back to the right after there was nothing there on the left side and that's an excellent run by the junior from High Point North Carolina. Gain of seven or eight on that play. Look, Greg, that stretch play, NC State loves it. Lance Thompson, the line coach of South Carolina, told me he's never seen a team run the stretch play the way NC State has. So they got to cover that backside cutback right there better than they did on that last play. Now they go empty set here on second and short. Gillespie has it go through his hands incomplete. So third down and two for North Carolina State. A little bit of a high throw right there. Ryan Finley has got to bring that one down. That was an easy pitch and catch. With some heat too, Greg. That's a back. You got to know your personnel as well. No question about that. But third down, manageable right here. I think if I'm Ryan Finley, I'm looking in the direction of number one, Jalen Samuels. They converted on a couple of third and longs and also converted on a fourth and short. This is third and two. It's a pass play. And it's a first down. Jalen Samuels on the catch to the 46 yard line of South Carolina. When it's third and manageable like this, he's almost always going to be the intended target. They just roll him out to the right. They sneak Samuels out right underneath. Easy pitch and catch for the conversion. Samuels pitching it back to Finley, and the tight end is open. Cole Cook inside the 20-yard line. He only had four catches all of last year. Lost his shoe on the play, but gets about 25 yards. And a nice little trick play right here. The pitch back, nobody picks up Cole Cook coming out of the backfield because he was aligned in a fullback position. Very, very nice execution and a great design by the offensive coordinator, Eli Drinkwitz. Cole Cook, two-time captain, a graduate student from Georgia. Hines. Grabbed inside the 15 by Sky Moore, so a gain of up four on the play. Cole Cook may not be the best athlete in his family. His mom, <laughs> Kelly Castile, was an All-American for Pat Summit at Tennessee back in the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, he's a competitor. So I would imagine in that family, they had some competitions growing up. Talking to this coaching staff, they say that Cole Cook is the leader 
of this offense. He said he holds everybody accountable. And if you don't like what he has to say, then just step out of the room, kindly please, sir. He is really a tone setter for this Wolfpack. Oh. Finley with time on second down. Samuels with an incredible catch. He got leveled and he still hung on to the ball. Chris LeMans, the free safety, drilled Samuels. You talk about concentration. Great catch. First and goal now from the two. Hines to the end zone. Touchdown, NC State. Man, I still can't get over that catch by Samuels. It's behind him, first of all. He gets hammered, yet still hangs on. Behind him, high, and working outside in, knowing that there's an awaiting defender ready to hit him as hard as humanly possible. <laughs> Tremendous concentration and a great finish and a nice exclamation point by Hines getting into the end zone. So we've had three long drives that have resulted in touchdowns. The other score from South Carolina came on the opening kickoff, and we are tied at 14 here in Charlotte, late first quarter. It's like a spaceship. It could take off at any moment. <laughs> I think there's two things you got to be very leery of as you approach that game. But that's going to be a heck of a matchup tonight. Jimbo Fisher against Nick Saban, two of the best in the business. To keep it away from Samuel again and kick it to A.J. Turner on the 10-yard line. And Turner makes it to the 27-yard line before he's brought down. Let's check in with Tom Luganville down on the field. No, guys, if you look down on the sideline here and you get a glimpse of Dave Doran, you know, the coaches can't use headsets. They're down right now. He's overseeing things. The trust that he has. Eli Drinkwitz and the offensive staff were down here about the 25-yard line for that red zone package. And Dave Doran was about 15 yards away getting a drink of water. Hey, he was managed in other areas. The, the trust he has, and Dave Huxtable, the defensive coordinator, Eli Drinkwitz, when you don't have headsets, that tells you your staff is dialed in. No question. And at practice, Tom, he just coaches the scout team. He loves these coordinators and trusts them completely. Rico Dotto had that touchdown catch on the last drive. Is the ball carrier here, picks up four yards. Tackled by Jarius Moorhead and Bradley Chubb. And that's the end of the first frame here in Charlotte. A ton of exciting plays, starting with Debo Samuels opening kickoff for a score. NC State responded, and we're all even after one at Bank of America Stadium here in Charlotte. Really nice performance so far on third down by the Gamecocks offense. So Bentley on second and long goes underneath and that pass behind Brian Edwards he was open third down and 12. We mentioned that Bradley's cousin Nick plays at Georgia Bradley's dad Aaron played at Georgia and actually the Chubbs founded Chubtown which is in the state of Georgia some 100 years ago. He's a special player man. Very, very gifted, but also very grounded. Has a great understanding of how he fits into this defense. Never tries to do too much and always gives a lot of credit to his teammates. On third and 12, here comes Chubb again. Wow, how did he not get Bentley? Bentley passed the 35, gets the first down. How about that? The quarterback on third and 12 with no regard for his own safety. Gets out of Bradley Chubb's hands and gets the first down. I don't know how he wasn't sacked. Great movement, subtle movement to the right right there. One step to the right and then north and south. What a great job by Jake Bentley. Avoiding the sack, feeling the pressure. Now, I don't think he has eyes in the back of his head, but look at that. Just a little bit of a move. You have to have a sixth sense as a quarterback. Feeling that backside pressure, negotiating it and then going straight north and south and getting enough for the fresh set of downs. Great job by the sophomore quarterback. Ben 
Finley's pass is caught for a first down by Edwards inside the 10. Terrific throw by the true sophomore, a gain of 26. You're going to see this connection a lot. Jake Bentley knew exactly where he was going with it. Split safeties down the middle. Perfectly timed, perfectly thrown. Look at his eyes. No need to negotiate a defender. Just find where my wideout's going to be and hit him right in stride. This sophomore-sophomore combination is becoming lethal right before our very eyes. First and goal from the eight. King Cox looking to regain the lead here. Turner into the teeth of that NC State front. You're talking about that group not just as a pass rushing unit, but stopping the run. NC State up front. Mario Williams, Manny Lawson, they were great getting after the quarterback. John McCargo was an interior defensive lineman. This group might be better against the run. I mean, you've got Contavia Street who benches 500 pounds and squats 700 pounds. Justin Jones squats 650 pounds. Where he patches to honor Mario Williams. Yeah. And this is a really stout group, and they're deep. They can go eight deep without dropping off significantly. Veteran group that knows exactly what they have to do to be successful. Ben Lee to the end zone, maybe just threw that away. It appeared that he did. You hope he did, based on how long that he overthrew Samuel. So third down and goal here. Greg, I think, line. Greg, I think you got to look to Hayden Hurst. I think you've got to get the tight end involved here. He's such a mismatch problem. Secondary and the safety play in terms of alignment, some mental errors, communication hasn't been what you want it to be for NC State on defense, and they might be one-on-one -on -one right now down here with at the top of your screen. There's Hayden Hurst right there in the slot at the top. One of the best tight ends in the country. Will Bentley look for him here on third and goal? Nobody in the middle of the field for NC State. Bentley throws it in the middle of the field, and it's a touchdown. Debo Samuel. Samuel scored twice today. Kickoff return, and now receiving touchdown. Gamecocks back in front. Wozniak makes it a seven point South Carolina lead. Jake Bentley. They said he was improved. I don't think anyone anticipated this much improvement. He's the heart and soul of the Gamecocks team. And he's throwing strikes today. Gamecocks lead by seven. A beautiful day here in Charlotte. Temperature in the low 80s. And some great offensive football. You made the point, Greg, about Jake Bentley's arm and how improved he is. How about his feet? That's what saved that drive. He picked up 12 yards on third and long, eluding the sack from Bradley Chubb to keep that possession going. Hines takes a knee, comes out to the 25. NC State, a team mini field, will contend not only for the ACC championship, but for a playoff spot. And the Wolfpack trail, but they have possession. All of their timeouts. First down in their 21. Ryan Finley, the quarterback, throws high and incomplete. Let's go. Saquon Barkley, one of the most dynamic players in college football. I think your teammate was the last running back to win the Heisman, right? Mark Ingram? Derrick Henry. Oh, same, that's right. Yep. Same school. Same school. Different team. Hines passed the 25 out to the 27. All right. Our athletic -like trivia question now. Who were the head coaches the last time NC State defeated oh South Carolina? Those are so hard. <laughs> so, that's so hard. The last time they played was when Russell Wilson was the quarterback. Oh, that's so easy. NC State, but the uh, they didn't win. So it's not the answer. I didn't, you think it's easy? Come on, Luke. Pass caught for first down. Ruled inbounds. Harmon on the catch. The so clock is so moving. we know it's not Tom O'Brien because Russell Wilson was there. I'm going to go with Dick Sheridan. No. No? Well, why do you already have the answer? 
I got it right in front of me. I mean, it's not That's that hard. Not the play-by-play -play guy has the card, which is the question and the they answer. They shouldn't have given you the card. Can you give us a hint on the year? I'll give you a hint on the South Carolina head coach. I uh, think I know who that is. He I don't worked, know. He worked at ESPN for. for is it the oh, same? Head, was it the same head coach of both schools at Lou Holtz? Lou 1999, Holtz. Mike O'Kane was the head coach at NC State, and Lou Holtz was the head coach at South Carolina. Mike O'Kane. I would not have gotten Mike O'Kane. No. <laughs> Lou Holtz, I know. I don't even know. Were you born in 99? Is that the yes? Okay. I was born in 99. He was he was in a pack and play in 99. Oh, <laughs> you too. We're I can't in a believe onesie. I have to deal with you the rest of the season. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> that onesie was cool, Tom. You know that. I still wear them. Of course. Nightly. Uh, footed right. pajamas. <laughs> First down for NC State on its 34 yard line. They called the timeout after Harmon was tackled inbounds and the clock was going to run. Empty set. Finley. Wow, look at the space they give Hines. Easy pitch and catch. First down out of bounds at the 45. A lot of speed, so they want to give Naheem Hines some room because he can run right by you if you get up close to him. Now, very aware obviously of where the boundary was there by Hines one minute on the clock if you're Ryan Finley you're thinking we have a ton of time we have an eternity plus two timeouts to get in the field goal range or potentially get a chance at a touchdown so don't need to push the ball down the field just yet Finley again with time Harmon on the catch heads for the sideline out of bounds at the 42 yard line. They're just taking five, six seconds off the clock per play and getting 13 yards like they did there. And they're getting it to the boundaries. That's what's crazy. The boundary is they're just opening up each wide sideline, giving them, they don't even need to use a timeout. Yeah, South Carolina's defense has to protect the boundary or else they're just going to throw 12-yard curl routes right down the field into the red zone. Ryan Finley. Looked like maybe South Carolina was offside. Harmon with another grab. Out of bounds inside the 30. There's a penalty flag down. Look like uh, he was outside. Defense number four. That penalty is declined. Result of a play is the first down. That was Bryson Allen Williams, but they take the play. And will Carson Wise get another chance? He missed from 29 yards. Obviously, NC State hoping they don't have to worry about a field goal, just an extra point for Carson Wise. Still a lot of off coverage, especially to the field by South Carolina's defense. You couldn't even see him in the picture there. And they throw it that way, and Stephon Lewis on the catch of the 19. So why do they do that when they get down here in a condensed field? It makes no sense, especially with 45 seconds left and a couple timeouts. I can understand if it's running really low and you're wanting them to use their timeouts, but not here. They're almost already in scoring position if they have a kicker. Yeah. And you don't want to give up free yardage in the red zone. I mean, that's five, six yards a pop at the very minimum. On second and 18, Finley finds Samuels inside the third. He got a chunk of it back. It's third down on about 12 here. NC State with one timeout left. Little tempo, guys. Well, they have to here with yeah. the clock moving. Still got a timeout. Finley down the sideline back shoulder caught by Harmon there's a flag that's thrown late Harmon out of bounds inside the five with 13 seconds left are they going to call him for pushing off on Jamarcus King they should. this is on the D holding defense number seven that penalty is declined the result of the play is the first down You see that right arm extended far beyond that five yard cushion mark. Yeah, that's a good call by the official. But a much better catch. First and goal on the four for NC State. Finley to the end zone. Touchdown! Jacoby Myers. So a guy that moved from quarterback to wide receiver because of the arrival of Ryan Finley last year gets a touchdown pass from Finley here in 2017 to get within a point. What a great two minute drive 
by this NC State offense. Outstanding execution, clock management, and now you're going to kick off with under 10 seconds remaining. That's exactly what you want in an end of half situation. And Wise able to shake off that missed field goal. Get the extra point, tie it up. Time, we're tied. Back to the studio. Coach, how much of an effect did not having headsets in that first half have on your ability to coach the game? It's absolutely ridiculous. Coach Com's fired. That's ridiculous. As far as coaching your football team, couldn't ask for more offensively from a production standpoint. Mo moving the ball extremely well. They continue to bring pressure. If we're able to block it, that uh, we can get some balls down the field. We hit the two touchdown passes. We're both on pressure. Uh, we got to settle down a little defensively and play a little better in the throwing game. The ball's coming out quick. Go, go, go ahead. With Greg McElroy and Tom Luganville, I'm Dave Pash back in Charlotte at Bank of America Stadium. SEC, ACC matchup to start and end the day. Florida State, Alabama, of course, later tonight on ABC. Fun first half here. Tied at 21. Ryan Finley threw the ball 34 times. They ran 21 more plays than South Carolina. But the different special teams and turnovers. Turnover by NC State, missed field goal by NC State, and then South Carolina started the game with a 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Now it's NC State's turn. Naheem Hines, one of the fastest players in the country, they just kicked it over his head so far today. Parker White, the kickoff man for the Gamecocks. And Hines might have a shot at this one. Nope, drifted a bit, so he takes a knee. It will come out to the 25. Greg mentioned that uh, Ryan Finley threw the ball 34 times in that first half. Do you expect more of that? Do you think we'll see more of the run game here for the Wolfpack? They have to try to establish some balance. Finley's been outstanding, very methodical. Both these offenses have been able to move the ball at will through the air. If you look at some of the drives that they've been able to put together, you see some eight, you see some nine, you see some 14 play drives that resulted in scores. Really well done. You can tell that Eli Drinkwitz is thrilled. And then on South Carolina's side, they also have had some many opportunities to move the football. Very efficient, but both teams have to make running the football a priority. Don't look like, really struggling so far. Don't look like we see a run here. They had nobody in the backfield again. But when it's working, why not? Catch made by Samuels, up seven or eight on the play. And back to South Carolina. You can see there's only been one three and out in the entire game, and that happened on the Gamecocks' second possession. The last drive, obviously. Ignore that. It was a knee. But really well executed so far by both teams. It's been a joy to watch, and it's really going to come down to who performs better in the second half in the trenches offensively and who can establish the run. They try Hines here and he has the first down. They had no rushing yards in the second quarter. They get about seven on that play. Let's check in with Lugs down on the field. The well, guys right before halftime talking with Will Muschamp. He mentioned how he's got to align better defensively come up with some different areas. So there's three distinct areas for South Carolina this half. Identify align and adjust so you want to identify the personnel align correctly so you can actually play the defense and then when the shift in the motion happens make the proper adjustments Finley going to throw it away here he was about to get leveled Dante Sawyer was in the backfield for South Carolina South Carolina has got to be really pleased with the way their defense in the trenches has played to this point. That was kind of a question mark coming into the season. Now they addressed it, brought some fresh faces, went to the Juco route for a couple different guys, but that group up front has really held their own against an experienced, physical NC State offensive line. Finley gets hit hard and throws it over the head of the intended receiver, Jacoby Myers. Sky Moore wallops Finley. Tom, this is that alignment. Sky Moore yep. just comes right off the right-hand side, trying to mix up their looks and try to catch Ryan Finley when he doesn't expect pressure. Nicely executed to set up the third and long, Tom. Not near as much cushion in the defensive secondary. Secondary playing confident. That's the adjustments now that they've made in the back end. How about the clean hit by Sky Moore? We saw a big hit last night on Jake Browning of Washington, but it's a clean hit. Guys are learning to get their head out of the way, hit the quarterback, and not get flagged. Finley going to get hit again. Sack. 
at the 38-yard line. Keir Thomas, sophomore from Miami, had two sacks all of last year. Keir Thomas, what a great job coming after the quarterback. They weren't real confident in this group being able to rush the passer with just four. Right there, Kier Thomas, a defensive end on the depth chart, slides inside to defensive tackle, makes a guy miss, and has a great play. Speaking of making guys miss, Lamont's always oh, slipped. They already had a kick return for a touchdown. Lamont's thought, you know what, I, I think I'm going to take this one to the house. But after 28 yards, he lost his footing. Quick sudden burst. Starts it to the outside, right upfield. Smart play. Vice. Dave Dorn, a defensive guy. He was the defensive coordinator at Wisconsin. He got the head coaching job at Northern Illinois, and then five years ago took the NC State job. This is his best team, he feels. But they're in for a fight today against the South Carolina team. Won six games last year. Dowdle pushing the pile near a first down at the 41 yard line. I like the way this kid runs. He loves to run between the tackles. Visiting with them in the spring, he said, Look, he might not have the burst that A.J. Turner has, but this guy is going to pound you, and he's going to make you feel it. And he gives South Carolina second and very manageable. So if I'm Kurt Roper, the offensive coordinator, this is the situation in which I would take a shot downfield, knowing that even on an incompletion, we got third and inches coming up. Instead, they keep it on the ground, play it conservatively, and get the first down with Dowdle. There have been so many good running backs at South Carolina the last decade. The best of all of them, Marcus Lattimore. Remember Marcus? He was a terrific player. He played for Jake Bentley's dad, Bobby, who's currently on the South Carolina staff in high school. And Jake looked up to Marcus Lattimore. Well, Lattimore looked up to Bobby Bentley. Marcus, who had his career cut short because of that horrific leg injury, tried the NFL, didn't work. He's now head coach in high school in South Carolina. Marcus Lattimore. Good for him. What a great young man and what an incredible football player. Play fake for Bentley. Look out. Gets away from the defender. Looking downfield. Letting it fly. And it's pulled in for the touchdown by Samuel. Look <laughs> at <laughs> Bentley. <laughs> Have fun. Samuel's having fun. Wow. What a talent. Three total touchdowns for Samuel. Two receiving and the kickoff return. The extra point. Seven point. South Carolina lead. Debo Samuel, he's been hurt from time to time in his career, but man, is he looking fresh today. But how about his quarterback evading the would-be tackler and throwing a perfect throw to the back of the end zone? Debo Samuel, a one-handed touchdown catch, three touchdowns in all today. Here's Hines returning this kickoff for NC State. Hit hard at the 28-yard line. Here's a trick play by NC State, but the Gamecocks are not full. Lewis is crunched in the backfield. Keir Thomas, who had a sack on the last drive, makes a play here along with Kobe Smith. So you what, just a great job by the right-hand side. Now, this is a matchup that I don't like. Ryan Finley evades the block. He's supposed to secure the edge. Keir Thomas got too far vertical and Finley couldn't block him. Therefore, it results in a huge loss on first down for the pack. Loss of six. Here's Harmon. Lifted up and dropped at the 32, so he gets six of it back. Eldridge Thompson made the tackle, so third down and long now. I'll tell you what, third and long now, each of the last two series. 
Every time South Carolina's had momentum, NC State has had an answer with the following drive, but back to back, third and tens for this offense to open up the third quarter for NC State. Keep an eye on Jalen Samuels. He's their go to guy on third down and long. Finley in trouble. Down he goes. Sacked again. Lost the ball. Recovered by South Carolina. Dante Sawyer got there to the quarterback. Forced the fumble. Recovered by Bryson Allen Williams. Second lost fumble by NC State. Let's see if Finley was down. You see that left knee hitting the ground, but is the ball already coming out? Ball's starting to come out. It's almost simultaneously. Jeff Bentley. And Bentley throwing to him again. Sandal on the catch inside the 10. Just working to the corner. A nice clear out with an underneath by the outside receiver. It's tough to cover. Simple, sm simple smash concept, but he seems to feel where open space is. And that's a real testament to his football acumen and his understanding of Kurt Roper's offense. Taping up that left ankle there of NC State quarterback Ryan Finley. Dowdle able to break a tackle and score. Touchdown. South Carolina. Just simple little counter to the right hand side or even a weak side power. A little down and a pull and a wrap. One broken tackle and pay dirt. That's the second missed tackle that's led to a big play by Bradley Chubb. All-America candidate for NC State. This is why college football is so great, right? Going into the year, we really don't know who's good, who's not. There's no preseason games. Everybody on the NC State bandwagon, but right now it's Carolina by 14. Now we're going to find out what NC State is made of. Is this a different Wolfpack team than in previous years? Hines hit twice, and down he goes, shy of the 15-yard line on the kickoff return. From the 13-yard line, they keep it on the ground. And Gillespie picks up four. Here's Tom. Fellas, if you take a look at Jalen Samuels on the sideline, they've, the athletic trainers have fitted, fitted him with some sort of, I guess what I would call a contraption on the back left of his leg from up into his hip all the way down into his sock. Something to do with the back hamstring or something. He has not come back into the game. They were working on him as well as Ryan Finley. Let's track his progress. That's a huge loss if he's not in the game. Your best player, perhaps, at offense. The last beat to the 20-yard line before he's dropped by Taylor Stallworth. Third down. This is a huge third down for NC State. So far, have not done anything positive in the second half so far. The one positive thing that we've seen from the Wolf Pack is that number one is now on the field again. There at the top of the screen at the top of the bunch formation. Can you see his leg in there, Greg, with that contraption on the back to see how he moves? On third and three, South Carolina brings a little pressure. Harmon caught it where, or excuse me, Samuels, and it's gonna be enough for a first down at the 25-yard line. Yeah, how do you run with that thing in his back of his leg there? It's a rubber band, and, and yeah. these have been used for the last few years or at least I think the last few years and it helps when your muscles are tight or you have a strain or something along the lines of that keeps them loose keeps those muscles flexed so we'll keep watching whether or not he can open it up that was a short route so it didn't really test it this is the kind of game NC State has lost way too often in the last three four seasons yeah it's very disconcerting to see them come out flat in the second half but right now have a little bit of momentum maybe you take a shot downfield. Got a run play to Hines through a crease. 
And the hole closes at the 40, a six-yard run for Hines. Final minute of the third quarter. Isn't this exactly what we talked about, though, guys? Uh, coming into the season, throughout the summer, leading up to this game, everything about this Wolfpack roster says contender. A lot of upperclassmen, a lot of registered seniors and juniors, and they can't have this type of lapse for an entire quarter to put them behind 14 points. You're just not going to be able to pull it off unless you flip momentum here in a hurry. On second and four, they'll run Hines to the right side. Stutter steps and finds a running lane inside the 25-yard line. Down to the 21, a 19-yard run by the track star, Naheem Hines. Really nice run right here by Hines. Look at him put that right foot in the ground and go north and south. The track star, like you said, showing off some of that speed for the big run. All ACC in the 100 meter. He's not afraid of power between the tackles either. We've seen that a lot today. He gets six yards on that play to end the third quarter. NC State on the move, but trailing South Carolina by 14 points. A lot of talk about which conference is better. ACC, SEC. Right now it's the SEC in front by 14. I heard Nick Saban's a good distributor on the, on the perimeter too. Pretty well done. Had both coaches on game day today. Gillespie trying to find a hole. He'll be short of the line to gain, so it'll be third down and one here for NC State. That's why both of those coaches want to recruit guys that play multiple sports, man, especially basketball. I remember Bob Stoops, when he was recruiting DeMarco Murray, he decided to offer him because he was at a basketball game. He was the best player on the court. Wow. Third and one. Gillespie has the first down. Rags defenders to the seven-yard line. So it's first and goal here for NC State. That's a nice, strong run and a nice surge up front for NC State's offensive line. You see a lot of hands on the hips of South Carolina defensive linemen right now. That tells you they're a little bit fatigued. Now, NC State about to snap their 70-second 70, 70 offensive play. You have to wonder if fatigue will start to play a factor here as the fourth quarter progresses. It's amazing. They've run 30 more plays than their opponent. They're down two scores. Make that close to one score. We'll see where they mark Hines down. Tackled at the one as he got upended by Brunson. You said he ran track. Did he run hurdles? His twin Look sister does. His twin sister is actually a hurdler at NC State. What an acrobatic play. Ouch. They run him again, and he won't get there. It'll be third and goal. Bryce and Allen Williams got him first. Surprised we haven't seen Gillespie. Here he comes. He's the bigger of the two backs that NC State's going to be using today. He's 225 pounds, number 25. He specializes in short yardage and north-south north -south rushing. Expect well, him to potentially get it here. With all the field goal problems, you got to be in four down, right? Absolutely. Down two scores, fourth quarter. They're going to run Gillespie. Able to muscle his way to the goal line. No signal yet. The ball's on the ground. They ruled that not only was he down, but he didn't get into the end zone. Boy, I thought he did with that surge. Forward progress was stopped really close. Man, that was a grown man tackle defensively I mean there is not a lot of defenders that can stop 225 pounds breathing fire straight at you Sky Moore can I know Gamecock fans are fired up to see him back on the field for stops like that led the team in tackles his first three seasons and missed last year with a neck injury he's had some big hits today and NC State going for it on fourth and goal Jalen Samuels is the back. Play action. Samuels of Justin makes the catch. Touchdown, NC State. Well, with him in the game, you have options. You can hand it to him, or you can throw it to him. Or he could throw it. He threw a touchdown last year. What an incredible catch by Jalen Samuels. Not a pretty throw from Ryan Finley. Not one that he'll remember fondly throwing it that far behind 
the intended wide receiver but your receiver always makes you right when he's a star and that's exactly what Jalen Samuels was on that play. Again it started with that muff punt by Chris LeMans that pushed the ball back inside the five then NC State got field position off a bad punt and marched down the field and score and with Carson Wise's extra point it's a seven point game. Call this play the 321 loop pass right you fake underneath you run your running back right to the front pylon and you cash it in for a touchdown. And there's Debo. They've kicked it away from him ever since. And they'll kick it deep here. They do have a little wind at their back. And it goes through the end zone. Touchback. Interesting. They got Tyson Williams in the game at running back. We haven't seen him at all today. He's a transfer from North Carolina, but he's in there now. Bentley's pass incomplete. Samuel could not hang on. Jake Bentley, a true sophomore quarterback who skipped his senior year of high school to attend South Carolina. His dad is on the staff as the running backs coach. Bentley was going to redshirt last year until midseason. They pull the redshirt. He ends up starting the final seven games, throws for almost 400 yards in the bowl game. There's his dad, Bobby, the running backs coach. Jake went to the Manning camp this summer. A lot of promise coming in, and that talent has been on display today. Second and ten. His pass caught by Sky or Shy Smith. Well played by McLeod. Shoved out of bounds. After a game of about four. And this is a big third down for South Carolina. Starting to feel the momentum leaking away from you just a little bit. The Wolfpack fans are getting into it as loud as they've been at any point here in the second half. Kurt Roper here, the offensive coordinator. Got to find a big conversion. When you need a play, where do you go here on third and six? In this particular formation, the way they're lined up right now, I like my chances one on one down here at the bottom for number 89, Brian Edwards, who's got a lot of game. Instead, Bentley throwing a deep ball far sideline, and it's picked off. Intercepted by Jonathan Alston playing his first game as a corner. Spent three years as a wide receiver, set out last year to learn his new position, and he makes a huge play. What a great play by Jonathan Alston. Knowing that they were going vertical, the reason why I did not like that matchup at the top. Yes, Debo Samuel is your best receiver, but he's just under six foot. Jonathan Alston over 6-1. Considerable height advantage and it results in an interception for the Wolfpack. And the Wolfpack down seven with the ball on their 31 yard line. 11 minutes remaining. Out in space to Samuels. Past the 35 and out to about the 38 yard line. Fellas, you can really feel the air just coming out of the balloon on this South Carolina sideline. You can see it in body language. You can see it on the faces of the players. Coaches are pacing nervously. Remember, with three minutes to go in the third quarter, NC State had 14 offensive plays in zero yards. Now all the momentum is on the red sideline, and they can feel it over there. It's a totally different stadium right now than it was 10 minutes ago. Play action here. Finley down the sideline. Beautiful grab. C.J. Riley inbounds, makes the catch at the 41-yard line. Let's make sure that he got down inbounds, secures the catch. You can see clearly that left foot comes down. The ball doesn't move at all. Really nice catch from the 6'4 freshman with a lot of promise. Incomplete on the pass intended for Harmon, who wants interference by Jamarcus King, but will not get a flag. Finley had one-on-one -on -one coverage down that right sideline, could not connect. We've talked about it. Finley really tried to make this point of emphasis down the field. I think you could have very easily called pass interference right there. That's an easy call. That's to an me, easy That's a no-brainer. Got his jersey ripping, and you can see the jersey come below the shoulder pad there. That's pass interference. I don't care what anybody says. Instead, it's second and ten for NC State. Finley finds Samuels. Trying to set up blocks for him on that wide receiver screen. 
Gain of four to the 36 yard line. No, Greg, as we approach the five minute mark here, you and I were talking about defensive fatigue for South Carolina, the lack of depth. No doubt they've made great adjustments here in the second half to apply pressure, play better in the secondary, but from field level, they're just hanging on right now from a numbers standpoint. At some point, Lukes, they have to make an adjustment to stop number one. Yep. Jalen Samuels in the slot. L lined up against a true freshman in Jemias Williams. They just motioned Jacoby Myers away from him, so he's matched up one-on-one -on -one now with a freshman. Finley looking that way. Samuels adjusts, can't come up with the play, incomplete. Jemias Williams, the true freshman, in coverage. And so it's fourth down, and it's go time for NC State. Yeah, you knew exactly where the ball was going to go. Yep. Jalen Samuels has 13 receptions and has been targeted 16 times, several of which on third down. You see that ball pop up and incomplete. Still an opportunity, though, in plus territory to potentially get it here on fourth down. Do you target him, you target him a 16 time? Absolutely. The freshman's there again, 21 on one. Keep, just keep an eye on number one. And they bring Samuels in motion here. He's the go-to guy, fourth and five for NC State. Finley for Samuels, makes the catch, stretches out, lost the ball. They say that he caught it, and then he was down. Did he get the first down? It's all going to depend on the spot. They mark him short, but... When they go back and look at this, I thought when he stretched the ball out, he got it across the 30-yard line. It was very, very close. You can see Jalen Samuels right there telling the official, look, I stretched it out with my right arm. Of course, we have to say the yellow line is not official, but it's pretty darn close. Let's see here with that left arm. He's not down there. He's still alive, and it appears he got it to the 30-yard line. Will that be enough, though, to move the chains? They're coming out to measure, but again, every play is reviewed. And this angle is going to be tough to see exactly where that ball came down, but it appears to me as though the nose of the football was far enough. He didn't get it based on measurement. We'll see if instant replay, though, has the final say. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, South Carolina. Well, I'm just surprised that they didn't respot the football, though. Right. I'm really surprised because based on the angles that we had, and they weren't perfect, but it appeared, without a shadow of a doubt, that that arm, when it was outstretched, the nose of the football touched at least the 30-yard line. I'm shocked. So South Carolina takes over, and they will throw it here. Hurst makes the catch, but he's going to lose yardage. They tried to get the ball to Hayden Hurst, who's been quiet all day, and NC State did a great job defending it. Sean Boone makes the play for the Wolfpack. He was a starter at safety last year. Now he's playing nickel and some linebacker. It's a loss of two. And Greg, they can't run it. Unfortunately, that is their run game right there. And if they don't right. get it into the hands of their best playmakers, it can at least get upfield. Their only hope is to keep that clock running. Only 29 yards on 18 attempts running the football against the stout front seven for the Wolfpack. They're going to try to run it, though. Dowdle found a little bit of running room. Bradley Chubb jumps out of the pile there at the 35 yard line. NC State will call a timeout here. It's a six yard run, so they get half of it back, and the Wolfpack will have one timeout remaining. The question still remains Can NC State win a close game? Can they win a game against somebody that they're supposed to? Can they win again a game against somebody that maybe they're not? They should beat South Carolina on talent here, but that's not how it's gone so far. Third and six, Bentley rolling out. 
And he's going to get taken down well short of the line to gain. In fact, loses yardage. Contavious Street. He's one of the biggest guys on the team. The guy squats 700 pounds. He's also an athletic freak in terms of his running ability and jumping ability. And he takes down Bentley there for a loss. Not a smart play by Jake Bentley right there. Nothing was there. You stay in bounds. Force NC State to think about the clock. Instead, he gets tackled, gets a hit, which you could avoid easily by sliding, and he stops the clock and gives NC State new life with that additional timeout that they would have had they would have been forced to burn had he been tackled in bounds. They get another good punt here. Hines fields it at the 16. Stays in bounds past the 30. Fumble the ball. NC State recovers it though at the 35 yard line. Bodine recovers the fumble. And now they're faced with a situation where they trail by seven against the South Carolina team that's played very well today. Has a kickoff return for a touchdown. Couple of takeaways, and they have to go 72 yards to tie the game. Finley hits Lewis, scoots out of play near the line to gain at the 37 yard line. Keep in mind, you go back to Jake Bentley going out of bounds. There should be an additional 30 seconds off the clock right now, and there's not. NC State's got one timeout left. These smart receivers, when that ball goes to the perimeter, remember the end of, this, of the first half. A lot of real estate between those corners at South Carolina and receivers at NC State. Out of an empty set, Finley on second and short, lobbing it up, and it was on target but dropped by Myers. Jacoby Myers looked like he was going to pull that in on a great throw by Finley. Beautiful throw to the outside shoulder. Ryan Finley said he really wanted to improve his deep ball accuracy when it came to this season, and he put one on the money right there. Jacoby Myers, who's had a nice day today, Drops the big play opportunity. Third down and one. He'll keep it on the ground. Hines. Pass midfield. He fumbles it again. South Carolina recovers it at the 42. It was stripped by true freshman Jemias Williams and recovered by Jamarcus King. Take a look. Is any part of that body down? It appears as though it was Ooh. before that ball comes out. First glance would say he's likely down by contact. Now keep in mind, has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn. Is now his elbows down. And his butt is down, and then the ball comes out. After review, the runner was down at the 49 yard line. The first down, NC State. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 241. 241 on the game clock. By all accounts, it appeared like he was down. Now, there is some language to where you have to have conclusive evidence to overturn and if you were to look at those two angles side by side it would have been pretty obvious that Hines was down by contact prior to that ball coming out a great effort by Jemias Williams but a great run by Hines to give NC State a fresh set of downs in Gamecock territory that was on a third and one he picked up 14 yards first down at the 49 of South Carolina NC State still with a timeout. Finley stepping up throws high over the head of the intended receiver incomplete. And here is the split screen from both angles. You can see that Hines is down on the left and you see the ball is still in his possession on the right. This is what led the officials to overturn the ruling on the field therefore giving the ball back to NC State for first and ten. On second and ten, Samuels makes the catch, but an immediate tackle by T.J. Brunson. He grabbed the rubber band. 
That contraption, as Tom described it, that they put on the back of the left leg of Samuels. That's how he made the tackle. Wouldn't you? <laughs> Trying to tackle down. him, I'd be grabbing anything I could. Huge third down right here for the Wolf Pack. If I'm Ryan Finley. I'm trying to find number one again. He's been the go-to guy all day long. 15 receptions, several of which on third down. And he's aligned in the slot to the top. Four down territory for NC State. South Carolina brings pressure. Finley down the field. Broken up by King, but a flag. He went for Kelvin Harmon. And Jamarcus King interfered with Harmon. It'll be a first down, NC State. Pass interference. Defense number seven. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah, clearly, Jamarcus King never tries to turn around. I know the throw is a little underthrown, and Kelvin Harmon has a right to get to it. King does not allow him to get to it, which results in the pass interference call correct call by the official so 132 on the game clock still a timeout left for NC State clock stops and all first down so there's plenty of time here for the Wolfpack South Carolina rushes just three here Finley climbing the pocket throwing it downfield incomplete going for Harmon boy that was any more underthrown I think Lamont's picks that off for South Carolina second and ten very that, dangerous throw right there Tom. Yeah it really was and you had a lot of over you had over the top and underneath coverage and, and you consider NC State second and ten one timeout they haven't had to use their timeout so the pass interference call and that incompletion so they don't have to be in a hurry here just have a sense of urgency be needy not greedy. You guys have talked a lot about Samuels there he is at the 30 yard line top of your screen. Finley instead goes for Harmon underneath and he's close to a first down about a yard and a half short clock is moving NC State will hold that timeout third down and one. Gillespie the big back is in would expect maybe a run right up the middle here. And there it is Gillespie. Nice job being patient getting the first down South Carolina trying to strip the ball able to. Keep his feet moving, bounce it to the outside enough to move the chains inside the 20 yard line. The clock will stop momentarily to reset the sticks. 59 seconds to go. South Carolina's got to be very careful how they play a deep throw here because of the back shoulder throw. These corners need to be very aware. Finley throws it out of bounds. So 45 seconds left, second down and 10. Ryan Finley has thrown 60 passes, 404 yards in this game. And South Carolina's defense has been on the field for 94 snaps. Considering they're a group that does not have a remarkable amount of depth, the fact that they're playing at such a high level late is very impressive. On second and 10, Finley looking over the middle. It's caught at the 10 yard line. Gillespie out of the backfield has a first down, which will stop the clock. They'll get rid of the chains because it's first and goal. And NC State will keep that final timeout. 35 seconds remaining. Finley looking. Throwing end zone into traffic. It's broken up. He was trying for Harmon. DJ Smith deflected it. Dangerous pass by Finley. Very dangerous pass. You have three defenders and two wide receivers. More often than not, that's going to end negatively for the offense. Finley getting a little greedy right there, trying to feed it to the corner of the end zone. Yes. Second and goal from the eight. Finley to the air. Now steps up and sacked. They got to use a timeout here. And Finley calls it. Bison, Allen Williams with the sack for South Carolina. So now they're out of timeouts. It's third and goal. They're three of three, though, on third down this drive. 
I'll tell you fellas that timeout not that one right there but the one before the South Carolina called was critical it actually created that sack here is why they are gassed on the defensive front right now they essentially that play before stood straight up had no pass pass rush whatsoever took the timeout came back put Bryson Allen Williams number four on the edge we were able to create that sack so right now South Carolina is trying to stay keep their breath about them for a couple of more downs. Yeah, 98 play that NC State has run here today. The last piece shifts back into the backfield. Finley to the end zone, incomplete. Going for Kelvin Harmon. Jamarcus King was in coverage. Fourth down, NC State has to go. Just off the mark, but pretty good coverage right there by Jamarcus King. With this being a gotta have it, obviously, down 7.15 to go. You have to identify the best player on the field if you're the quarterback. And the best player is number one. He's been the guy all day long, even if he's double covered, find a route that can get him uncovered for the touchdown. Finley backing up, in trouble, moves to his right, now throws, end zone tip, incomplete! South Carolina takes over on downs with six seconds to go. DJ Smith got a piece of the ball. Well, a lot of discussion in the offseason. Has the ACC surpassed the SEC? I don't know if we'll have the answer by the end of tonight. Florida State, Alabama, by the way, coming up later. But the SEC is going to win this one. Finley trying to find Jalen Samuels. You see his eyes start to the left and down the middle. Gets good pressure up front. Not a lot of options as you're rolling to the right-hand side. And a tremendous defensive play by South Carolina to secure the victory. What a win for Will Muschamp going into his second year. 35-28, the final score. South Carolina beats NC State. For Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville, I'm Dave Pash. On to Athens, Georgia, Appalachian State against the Bulldogs.